It's been a real hard week. But I'm encouraged in my soul. I'm going to worship the Lord. You can work your whole life. People are waiting for one moment. But I'm going to worship the Lord. Even if I feel misunderstood, I'm going to lift my hands and worship the Lord. Who may approach the mount of the Most High? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. I will worship the Lord. moments when you're going to have to worship when nothing makes sense and there are moments when you will have to stand alone but it cannot stop your worship I have learned this like never before the people who are assigned to your life who see your heart this is a season where the Lord will allow the ones who are connected to you to see you as you are. And the ones who can't, it's not your job to make them see. Let me help to define this season. This is a season for you to see who everybody is. Hey, I'm going to say it again. This is the season where God wants you to see who everybody is. Because when elevation comes, everybody wasn't assigned to go with you, but they would have gone. Do you know that there were some people attached to your life? They never really liked you. They just knew you were anointed. And God loved you too much to let them go with you where you're going next. So he loved you enough to let you see. And it doesn't mean that they're bad people. We're just going in different locations. Yeah, we're not going to speak evil of anybody. We're going to speak life. Because that's what Romans 12 tells me to do, even though I, it gets on my nerves. He's like, you got to bless those who curse you. I'm like, I don't like that part. Sometimes you got to worship when it doesn't make sense. And since I didn't call me, I don't get to decide where he sends me. We are ambassadors, which means I go where my king tells me. I just want to give you a 30 second opportunity to do that. <laughs> I want you to send something into the atmosphere that lets God know you can send me where you want. I'll go where you tell me. I'll do what you ask me because I trust you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
I just heard the Holy Ghost say, standing right there, I've never heard this. Maybe you have. He said, there is a praise that births an economy. There is a praise that births an economy. It's so violent and penetrating that poverty can't stay. Debt can't stay. Depression cannot stay. An economy needs an ecosystem, which means it's not that God's going to just like give you a check. He'll give you a sustainable idea that produces perpetually. I believe that we are in an atmosphere where there is, there is a praise that will birth an economy. I am asking for you to trust me that if you will take a second and go kind of crazy in your worship, that God can trust you with an idea that generates resources for the kingdom. There is a praise that generates resources for the kingdom. Yes, your family will be blessed, but this is kingdom church. But you can't be scared. You gotta open your mouth and say, God, you can trust me. I'm gonna give you just a few more moments. There are omnipotent opportunities of God in the room. There are omnipotent opportunities of God in the room. There are businesses being released, books being released, ideas being released, technology being released, freedom from generational bondage being lifted off as you worship because where God is the devil cannot be where God is the devil cannot be light and dark cannot dwell to on me just a couple more people I need about eight more people in that balcony to give God an uncommon work. Renal failure reversed. Kidney issues reversed. Bloodborne diseases reversed. 
And if anybody thinks I'm playing games, we have documented healings that have been happening over the last three months. People being healed from cancer, we have documented healing, surgeries that were scheduled, that when they went in, they didn't see what they saw. This is the word of the Lord. This is not parlor tricks. People don't think God is real. But God's going to show the world that he's real through his church. He's going to bring glory back to the local church. And miracles are going to happen in people's lives. And no one will be able to deny. They'll never be able to deny it was Jesus. There is a praise that births an economy. It changes things. But it does not come in peacetime. It comes in warfare. Somebody needs to push you. Somebody needs to mash you in your face. Somebody needs to try you so you can be like, what? Where my warriors at? We ain't never scared. We ain't never scared. I need somebody to get out of your seat and in these hours. Wait, I need you to hear this because I didn't know this. Now once you hear it, do what you supposed to do. Have we talked? I like your braids. We haven't talked. Okay, tell them what. Hold on. So, back in March, I began to have issues with my kidneys, with one of my kidneys. And two years ago, I had issues where one of my kidneys stopped functioning and the other one was starting to go down. Now, we were talking to the doctors about dialysis and everything, but God healed me two years ago. <laughs> This year, this year, March, at the end of March, beginning of April, same kidney started acting up. It was getting to the point where it was not functioning again. I really didn't tell anybody about it. I prayed about it by myself with my close friends. And over the months, I've been going to the doctor, checking and checking and checking. And two Fridays ago, I went to the doctor and they said that if things kept going the way that they were going, we were gonna to have to look at further action. So What's further action? Further action would be dialysis and everything because my kidney both of my kidneys were starting to shut, shut down. Okay. So I gave them permission because I knew I would be with Pastor Tasha at I lead and I knew that I would be very busy <laughs> last week. That if they called and if I was not available, they could leave a message. On Tuesday, they called me. They found nothing wrong with my kids.
sickness that runs in your family, I have authority this morning, this afternoon, and I got faith to declare whatever the congenital generational sickness is at 12 12 p.m. it is finished if you believe it praise him Thought you was gone. <laughs> and they were all in one place on one accord. It's a prophet in here. I was sitting in my condo in Atlanta in 2009. I wasn't living holy. I told people I was, but I wasn't. I got quiet because y'all like fake preachers that act like they always been. I was single living in Atlanta. I wasn't sleeping with nobody, but I sure was thinking about it. I wouldn't do it, but I'd get right on the edge. Nobody wants to hear the truth. You know, you didn't play them edge games. All right, keep your jeans on, but I'll just, just get close, get close. Get... <laughs> Preaching was struggling in my flesh. I got a call from a prophet one morning early. She said, she said, I don't know what you're doing. She said, but the Lord said, stop now. Stop now. Because the grace you had is not the grace you'll have. That's what she said in essence. She said, she said, I don't know what she said. Whatever it is, God is saying right now, danger. Stop now. Same day, my mother called. She said, I was in prayer and the Lord spoke to me about you. She said, I love you. You're my only child. She said, but God's holiness is more important than you as a person and a personality. And he's not going to be mocked. Make a choice today. because he can do whatever he wants to do without you. And he will take you out of here. And it scared me that my own mother, God sent two prophets and they're both in here. You're right there, my wave your hands. Thank you for telling me the truth. I'm not here without without somebody loving me enough to tell me the truth. Sometimes the assignment isn't popular and you won't see the fruit right then. Oh God, I know about it. 
But you got to say what the Lord told you to say and go where the Lord told you to go. So what you see is the fruit of your obedience. <laughs> and there'll be a seed coming to you to say thank you for your obedience. The spirit of the Lord is in this church. Does anybody deny that the Lord is here? Let me pray for you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this moment and speak through your word that we are closer to you when the moment is over than we were when it first began. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be home. This is Relentless Church. We're going to serve you. And we thank you for the opportunity to come together, to worship together. And now come let us reason together in the word. Let us grow and mature. And Jesus, let it produce fruit. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You can give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. If you'll do me a favor, go to Romans chapter 12. As you're going there, I want to take a moment. This has been a very challenging week for me, and I'm glad to be home at my church. I want to, for the, and I do mean, last time, uh, speak to some things that you may have seen only partially in the news. Uh, I, I was invited to speak with a number of other pastors about prison reform and the possibility of churches partnering with the government once legislation passes to allow people who are coming out of prison to get job training so that they can have full-time employment with benefits, which reduces the risk of repeat offenders, breaks cyclical poverty, the prison system which disproportionately affects black and brown individuals. And I wanted to go and speak, and that was why I accepted the invitation. I did not know where I would sit, I did not know that there would be cameras. In fact, I was told that there wouldn't be. That was not the case. The narrative has been written that there were other motives and other things, and I understand that we are a deeply divided nation and that the politics of optics prevails against the truth of one's heart. And so I wanted to take a moment to let you know that I did not go as a politician, because I'm not that, I'm a preacher. And let me say this, because I understand the questions and I also understand the pain that many people feel. Please understand that God has a history in his word of sending people who love him to leaders of governments and nations. As long as the motive of the one being sent is pure, you cannot change what people think about you. I'm not for sale, I can't be bought, I got nothing. In fact, what I got was a lot of anger and vitriol and misunderstanding. But I'll say this, nobody will ever tell me who I can and can't pray for. I serve God. And while I respect people's right to their opinion, I don't bow at the will of popular opinion. I serve God, I'm gonna have to face him and answer to him. And I say this, my attendance does not mean agreement, alignment, or endorsement. You work with people you don't agree with, but you got a job to do. Did you hear what I said? And you cannot influence a table you are not seated at. people want me to dishonor and disrespect, I won't do it. And I'll say this and I'm gonna preach the word. I don't mind people who are not believers saying things that they've said. I expect that. People of other religious faith systems and beliefs, I get it. 
What I wasn't really prepared for was the friendly fire. People who I've known for years. And then with this one moment of disagreement, they turned it into an entire narrative. Because I've learned that people will judge you, they'll judge your whole story based on the chapter they walk in on. This is what it tells me. There are people who didn't like me the whole time. They just needed a reason to vocalize it. So I'm glad I know who they are. And I pray the Lord blesses them and gives them favor and covers their family. May no harm come to them. Not because that's what I want to say. But because I don't belong to me. I'm a Christian and I can't be saved when it's convenient. Our nation needs healing and we need Christians who are not willing to let this racial divide stay. That's why this church is so critical. I told y'all something was going to shift between the third and fourth week in this series. I told our staff, I said something was going to shift. I didn't know it was going to be me. <laughs> I just want some sweet tea and biscuits. Having said that, I love you and I ask that you will, through this vision series, continue to discern my heart. If I'm preaching anything other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, walk out the door. If I dishonor scripture, walk out the door. If you find out ulterior motive, walk out the door. But if you see a man who loves God and is trying to figure it out and serve God and serve people, then let's walk this thing out. Romans chapter 12. Thank you. Thank you. Romans chapter 12. I'm not going to do... I, how can I not do this? How can I not honor the woman who fought for me, encouraged me? Before I went, she said, this is everything that could happen and it may happen. I know your heart, but the people won't understand. You've got to be wise. Are you sure it's God? I said, babe, I know. None of it makes sense, but I know it's God. She said, well, then go with God and I got your back. And she has covered, fought, interceded, went off. She's had class, grace, then she went hood, went online, held it down, took her wig off, put her braids on. I just want to tell you how much I love and honor you for being what I needed, for giving me wisdom, and then fighting for me. Even though it was hard on our family, thank you to Pastor Aventer Gray. You know what I love about that? That spirit will be on, on the women of Relentless. Discerning, classy, powerful, anointed, but will fight if they have to. I like that. And fellas like it too. We like that. We like when y'all get a little rowdy. It's kind of a turn on when y'all be like, what you say? What? Romans chapter 12. By the way, no matter what you're going through, keep your joy. Ooh, that makes, that makes people so mad when you just just smiling. I want to kill him. Why is he still smiling? The joy of the Lord is mine. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Tell somebody, scoot over. I'm getting ready to preach from the subject heading, the body shop. The body shop. This is not a church. It's a body shop. How many cars did you see on the video? I'll ask again. How many cars did you see on the video? How many parts? How many cars? How many parts? Look around. Parts. Look around. Parts, look behind you, it's parts, not spare parts. <laughs> Kiana, there's a difference between parts and spare parts. See, because when you're a part, that means you are essential. Let me make it clear that every person that is here, and of course, shout out and so much love to our online campus, relentless online campus is off the hook. Love y'all, make some noise for our online family. We are one body, many parts. Jesus, as he was about to go to the cross in John chapter 17, was praying before he died and he said, Father, make them one as you and I are one. Jesus. Them and me and I and you. Make them one. Jesus was always about community. Even when he instituted the Lord's Supper, what did he say? Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Take this cup, my blood, the new covenant in my blood. What do we call that meal? Communion. Communion. The word community comes from communion, the idea that we are better together, the idea that you have innate intrinsic value and that I don't get to dismiss your humanity because it's not convenient to my agenda. I'm getting ready to go there, Pastor Q. For too long, church has existed where an individual personality gets up, performs to your pleasure and liking, to get you to somehow come back the next week to perpetuate this machine called westernized Christian entertainment. But the original New Testament church was a community of believers who walked it out together most often under perilous conditions, making sure that the people in their community had what they needed even at the expense of their own comfort. There was no entertainment factor with the New Testament church. The early New Testament church was under peril when apostles were getting sawed in two, boiled in oil, crucified upside down, and they were glad to do it because they had a revelation of who Jesus was. One my God, two yes is a couple of waves and an amen because I'm bringing a new paradigm to the idea of what we've all been a part of because I've been a part of it too. But I need you to hear me because I am not here to entertain you. I am here to unlock you. Yeah. 
the purpose of the preacher is not to build a kingdom to himself. The purpose of preaching is to give you the effectual word of God so that it will unlock the seed of the spirit that's in you so you can begin to produce fruit and fruit that remains. Which means... If you are a casual church attender, you will be frustrated because I won't entertain that aspect of your flesh desire. I am sent to unlock people until they look like Jesus. It's the only way the world is going to change. And the only way that you're gonna look more like Jesus is if you get off the sidelines and get on the playing field. Every single person in this church and those who are on our online campus have a gift or gifts that are so unique and so necessary that the only person in the history of humanity that had that gift is you. And what a disservice it would be if you died and didn't maximize the gift that God gave you. Let me help you to understand. Some of your gifts will not be executed and expressed on this platform. Your platform might be the world. Can God trust you in finance, government, real estate, arts, entertainment, academia? Can God trust you in areas of technology? Can God trust you in the business place, in the marketplace? Can, um, can God trust you? Or do you want to be church famous? where you find your validation in a name tag. Where we feed each other's insecurities and secretly wait for someone to fall so we can act like we care, but secretly we're excited because now I get to take their place. Please know God exposes all hidden motives. The purpose of the vision series is to let y'all know what kind of church we're building. After these seven weeks, you'll know whether or not you want to be a part of Relentless Church. I want you to make an informed decision because I know I'm not everybody's pastor, but I'm somebody's pastor. Let me, the t let me tell you the church I believe I'm called to lead. A church of multicultural, multi-generational believers filled with the Spirit who walk in community, fight for one another, and will do whatever it takes to look more like Jesus, even at the expense of their own popularity, <laughs> prestige, or comfort. I further believe that this is a church where miracle signs and wonders will be common but won't be treated commonly. I believe that our worship and our arts and our expression of our music and our creativity will lead the world. Notice what I said, we're not gonna mimic the world, we'll lead the world, where people in the industries of movie and music will come here and be inspired by what they experience because there is no greater creative mind than the mind of Christ. My heart for this church is that we will look more like Jesus each week and that we will serve one another, honor one another, and respect one another in spite of our differences. Everybody say the body shop. The reason why I call the church the body shop is because you take a car to the body shop when there's damage. Anybody ever had an, a car accident? Watch this. Anybody ever had a car accident? It was your fault. Put your hand up. Anybody ever had a car accident with somebody else's fault? Y'all lying. You, it was you. Texting. Eating chicken. Bojangles, because them biscuits and Bojangles is off the hook. <laughs> Eat up my boss shot. You get there. Normally some guy named Earl is in there. Uh, it looks like uh, you got a, a body panel and you got your chassis and your rocker arms are moving rotated in your rotator cuff. You got your, uh, got your shock absorbers caught up in there in the medulla oblongata over there. 
<laughs> what? Yeah, you got a, you got a carpal tunnel there in your uh, supercalifragilistic. It's expialidocious. It's, uh, it's a bad deal. You have to get that sick because your uh, mama say mama saw's over there next to your mama kusa. And, uh, Well, well, how long is it going to take? Well, we got to order the parts. See, church is not just about your comfort. I told you to scoot over because there's more parts coming. I wish I had six believers that will give God a 10-second praise break. It's not just about you. There are other people that are hurting. There are other people that need God. There are other people that need to come in. You need to scoot over and make room. Sometimes you're so damaged, God has to send another part to connect with the part that's damaged. He's not gonna throw it away, he's just gonna add something to it to make it stronger. Two is better than one, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Stop trying to dismiss the people next to you. You might be sitting next to your miracle. You might be on the same road as the very thing you need. But it's only a heart of worship that will unlock the revelation. And some of y'all been sitting there worrying about the problem instead of worshiping the God that can take the problem and turn it around. And if I were you, if I'm in the body shop and the mechanic is here, I would worship until the mechanic turned in my direction. The body of Christ for too long has been velvet ropey, insular, club atmosphere only the cool kids can come in but this is not a museum this is a hospital for the broken which means I get to walk in with my scars I don't have to hide them and I'm certainly not hiding them from you to impress you if I didn't need Jesus I wouldn't be in here I'm in here because I'm hurting. I'm in here because I'm broken. And if I didn't have a mic, I'd be on the front row because I'm not just the pastor of the church. I'm a member of this church and I need the same Jesus you need. So don't put me on a pedestal. Put Jesus on a pedestal. We are the body. We are the body, but what does the body of Christ look like? Some of us are wounded. Some of us are wounded. Pastor Q, stand up, please. You have large biceps, sir. You work out, sir. You're a pastor in the Lord's church, sir. And if you decided to show aggression towards me, say, for instance, this malformed right arm of mine that is going to the gym tomorrow, I'm prophesying. <laughs> hey, it's not there yet. I'm built like an upside-down pyramid. I look like Gru. Pray for me. Um, just, um, <laughs> like a brown Shrek. Look like Breck. Um, if you got mad and you used all your force and punched me in my arm, it would hurt a lot. I wouldn't be your friend anymore. It would hurt very badly. Perhaps bruise, leave a mark. But I wouldn't go to the doctor and say, doctor, I'm bruised. Can you cut my arm off? So why when we see bruised people, hurting people, and they come to church, why do you all of a sudden want to cut them off? Because you see what they're going through. You see, oh, she's not dressed properly. What do you mean properly? What is church clothes? That's the problem. You got church clothes, but don't have a heart of Christ. Excuse me, usher. I'd like to move because this person smells like smoke. 
They've been smoking. This is cigarettes. Actually, I think it's reefer. And someone else, that's alcohol. That, I know that's alcohol. How you know? You see somebody walk in. They look like they've been going through a rough time. They don't smell like they've had the same access to showers. You, they smell like the outside. Yeah, you smell like pride. And in this moment, we don't have the luxury of throwing people away because Jesus is not just Savior, he's Redeemer, which means he can redeem broken things, put them back together again, and create value from broken lives. Is there anybody here who's messed up, failed, done the wrong thing, and Jesus didn't throw you away? Can you give God praise so the people at home watching online know that they're not by themselves? Only imperfect people can worship. Perfect people, please remain seated. Don't move. Stay where you are. This praise is for the broken. This praise is for the hurting. This praise is for the lost. Those who have felt like they had nothing of value to give, but God still loved you, fought for you, and redeemed you. If he's done any of it, then give him a praise right there. I'm concerned that church often discards the wounded. I've been in different churches, and in some of them, not all of them, but in some of them, it felt like no one knew how to kill the wounded like the church. Since I could come in wounded, but if I talk to the wrong person, they're going to kill me. I knew I was broken when I walked in. I didn't need you to make it worse. And then people will do it under the guise of, well, I'm just keeping it real. No, that's not why you did it, because you needed to feel better about yourself. And you were waiting for somebody that was weaker than you so you could feel better about you. <laughs> Mommy, we are the body of Christ. And we don't have the luxury of casting people away because Jesus died for everyone. The body shop, Relentless Church is a body shop where you can come in with your brokenness, no matter what it is, and you can find refuge here, safety here. The idea of an exclusionary church is dishonorable to the blood of Jesus. Those doors are open for anybody that wants to walk through. And it's because in Matthew 22, Jesus gives the illustration of a wedding banquet that was prepared for the elites, but they rejected him. And the people that were invited actually killed the messengers, symbolic of the children of Israel killing the prophets of God who were trying to bring them the truth because people don't like truth. That's another sermon. And then God says, go out to the highways and hedges. Invite everybody you see, both bad and good. So when you come into this church, please don't walk in expecting comfort. We want dangerous church where people who've been doing God knows what the night before will still feel welcomed in here. I'm going to wait till we get that revelation, Manira, because if I've been hurting and the world has beat me up, the last thing I need is for the folk who are supposed to have the love of Christ to kick me while I'm down. I can't help but think about my cousin Rex. Rex needed a body shop. Y'all don't know Rex. He's, uh, 
He was the closest male cousin age-wise to me, and I looked up to him. He had a tough life. Didn't have the best, easiest upbringing. But he had so many gifts. All he needed was the right tribe. Sometimes who you're connected to makes all the difference. His name was Rex. Before I tell you the rest, I'm looking at this crowd and it blows me away because I see all of your heads and I see your shoulders, but I don't see your feet. And I'm glad. I don't see your feet. I see your head, I see your shoulders, I see your torso, I don't see your feet. And here's why that's important. I'm going to show you a picture. The picture is of a forest. Put the forest up. Please put the forest up. How many trees do you see? How many trees do you see? It's a whole lot of trees. Guess what? That's called a pando tree. It's part of a forest in Utah. That is not many trees. It's one tree. It has the ability to reproduce itself based on a shared interconnected rooting system. It duplicates itself and gains strength from one another. It's not multiple trees, it's one tree. That forest is minimum 80,000 years old. And the reason why it's been able to maintain and sustain and reproduce is because even though each one of those trunks has different branches and different leaves. It's all rooted to the same thing. I don't see your feet, but if you're in here, you're rooted to the word. I need somebody to give him praise. Hold on, hold on. The pan, it's called a pando tree. It's a part of an aspen fir tree. And this is, this is the part that I, I need your participation. Because the, the word pando means I spread. Which means the body of Christ is not supposed to stay safe with us. This is not a club. We're supposed to build the kingdom. We need to be inviting people. And if we're not inviting them, the fragrance from here should be so great that people want to know what's going on in here. But the thing about the trees is that the reason why this unique ecosystem works is because the leaves literally move at the slightest breeze. The breeze is symbolic of the wind of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what directs the church. Everybody who is able to, please stand up. I don't want you to hold hands because y'all been digging. I want you to lock elbows. Lock elbows if you can. Get over there and lock elbows. Don't let go. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all seating just one down and the other. This is crazy. I'm a visitor. Where's the visitor tree? I don't like this. <laughs> I need you to do something with me. I just need you to. Move back and forth. This is what the body of Christ is supposed to be. Interconnected. Moving with the wind of the Holy Ghost. Wherever he says go, we go. Whatever he says do, we do. And the enemy is just waiting on the one tree that gets disconnected. But as long as we're connected, he can't get in. Because as long as you're rooted to the word and touched by the wind of the Holy Ghost, the enemy can't take you out. The only tree that's in danger is the tree that walks away. And trees ain't supposed to walk because trees are supposed to stay planted. I saw somebody wave their hand. They got caught up. Get your elbow back in there. The enemy is hoping that you'll stop moving with the wind of the Holy Ghost, hoping that you'll look for your own rooting system, or 
if the wind of the spirit or the word of God offends you, you disconnect and go to a church that will appeal, but you won't grow. Be careful because even uprooted trees live for a little while. They don't live long, but they'll live for a minute. But after a while, because they're not rooted, leaves going to wither, start turning brown. But if you stay planted, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. I am connected. And what I see is a multicultural, multi-generational, interconnected body of believers, all of us with our own issues, insecurities, brokenness, and failure, but we also got gifts, talent, anointing, and resources, and by myself, I'm good, but next to you, I'm unstoppable. Don't let go yet. I'm just trying to get you excited because the reason why I want you to rock is because the enemy will try to come. But as long as we stay together and stay rooted, we just gonna move with the wind, but we won't break. He can attack all he wants, but we're not going anywhere. This is the power of the body of Christ. That as long as I stay connected to my brother and sister, I've got safety. This week I learned like never before, I need my brothers and sisters. Every now and then, you can't stand alone. You need somebody that's going to stand with you. And when you don't have strength to fight for yourself, you need somebody connected to you that'll lift up a praise for you. Now, I'm going to let you let your friend's elbow go in three seconds, but I need you to give God a praise like the wind of the Spirit has moved on your road. Are you ready? One, two, three. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine. Because somebody needs your strength. Somebody needs your encouragement. Somebody needs your love. Somebody needs you to fight for them. I've been going through hell all week, but I knew I wasn't alone because when I felt like giving up, people started showing up, texting me, tweeting me, DMing me, encouraging me, letting me know I'm not by myself. And it doesn't matter what the devil tries because I got family, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. I got my squad, I got my hitters. We are the body of Christ and we're not going anywhere. You can try it devil, but I got my men's with me. And I got my wife. What devil? You thought I was going to give up? Even if I wanted to. I'm connected. And when I'm weak, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. I will not faint. And I didn't know where my strength was coming from. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on the way as an eagle they will run and not get weary they will walk and not they will walk and not this season 
was designed to show you who your crew is. You need a Peter, a James, and a John. Peter is your gangster. Cut an ear off. Set it off. Then you need a James. James is your theologian. You need a John. He's a diplomat. But you need the hood. You need the word. You need a diplomat. And depending on the situation, you're going to need all three. This week, I needed all three. They're hurting me. What do I do? You got to bless them. But what they're saying is wrong. You got to bless them. Pray for them. You got to serve them. Romans 12 says you actually have to serve your enemies. Feed them. So put your apron on. Give them the best meal they got. Why they killing you? Is there anything else I can get you? But then it's a couple folk that's just, they just ignorant. That's when you need Peter. Where are my Peters at? People were saying, your wife was responding to people. That ain't no first lady. I said, no, that's my wife. Your wife got tattoos. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. I'm kind of kind of freaky like that. I like tattoos. I like the ones y'all see and the ones y'all don't. All right, come on back, Holy Ghost. But for any strong women in here, you know when you finish fighting, your femininity comes back. And I just need my wife to know she's not alone. Any of her sister's family, can y'all just come surround her real quick? Some of her sisters. Come on, Nisi. Come on. Just the staff. Rain Dance Company. I just need her to know she's not alone. She's representing every warrior woman in here. Where are my prayer warrior women? Where are my intercessors? Where are my strong women? Fight for your man. Fight for your house. Fight for your kids. But very rarely does somebody fight for you. Well, we about to fight for y'all. I said, we about to fight for y'all. So I declare, Pastor Aventer, blessed. Seven times blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed in the name of Jesus for what you represent to the body of Christ, what you represent to the kingdom of God in being unashamed in your love of God, unashamed in your strengths and weaknesses, fighting for your children, your husband, your church, your community. And may that heart for people echo all across this church and online in Jesus name somebody give God a praise right there I know it's almost time to go but don't leave we the body we go get some chicken together afterwards but I need somebody who wants these notes Alicia to get these three points so important because we are the body. But as the body, I want you to stand up. This is not going to take long. You can sit down, whatever you want to do. Grab these three things. These are the questions because we are the body. Number one, who's your father? Who's your father? Number two, what's your function? Number three, what's your flaw? Who's your father? What's your function? And what's your flaw? When I ask you who's your father, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6 says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all. We might come from different places, we got the same daddy. 
We might not look alike, same dad. Which means if somebody doesn't agree, that's between us, that's family business. Did you hear what I said? It's family business. But let somebody from the outside say something. You better mind Joe. Mind your business, this is family. Because we have the same father, we need to treat each other with respect. We might not agree politically or ideologically. We may not come from the same place. We, may, we don't all look alike. Same father. Everyone here is to be honored and respected. Are you hearing my heart? I want our worship to reflect the multicultural aspect of our church. We will be intentional about diversity. If you want a church that only looks and thinks like you, I'm sure there are places around here that will meet your need, but we don't pander. Number two, what's your function? What's your unique contribution to the kingdom? Everybody here has a role to play. And before this vision series is over, we're going to identify your gift and we're going to get you plugged in so you can begin serving. You might not be able to do everything, but everybody can do one thing. And number three, what's your flaw? It's the body shop. If you're perfect, then you're in the wrong place. In Genesis 9, we find that Noah had planted a vineyard after the flood, and then he got drunk off what he planted. And one of his sons went in and saw him naked. And he went out and told his brothers, yo, dad is in there naked in a mug. It's crazy. The Bible says Shem and Japheth walked in backwards with a covering. Not looking on their father's nakedness, covered him. And then walked back out the tent. I didn't ask you what your flaw is so I can direct message about it. I didn't ask you what your flaw is so I could put it in a, in a text feed. I asked you what your flaw is so I know what to cover. Yeah. Apostle Dwayne Harden, we are, we're called to cover one another. I brought up my cousin Rex. Rex walked through a lot of things in his sexuality. There were times when he identified as gay, probably other times when he identified as bi. At a certain point in his life, he also started dealing with drugs. And the drugs took over. And he began battling through mental challenges that come with that kind of thing. And I had just started singing with Kirk Franklin. And I remember driving home, and I was driving down one of the worst drug streets in Cincinnati. And I saw my cousin, who I used to look up to, walking down the street, street with a pink sweater on, had pom-poms on the shoulders, and he had a clear plastic bag with his dirty clothes in it. And I drove past him. And God says, you so big that you can ignore your own flesh and blood? <laughs> I turned around. I blew the horn and said, Rex. It's John John. He said, hey, hey, man, hey, 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 how you doing? I was just going to wash my clothes. And you got some quarters? He said, I got something, man. Just get in the car. And I could smell the clothes. It had his waist in it. You could see it. And I let him put his clothes in my car with his pink sweater on with the ruffles. He was serving them. You better slay. <laughs> and I took him to the laundromat. And I said, you need anything else, Rex? He said, no, nah, man. He said, I love you. He said, I love you too. And I hugged him. And whatever was on him got on me. Because that's what family is.
And I learned it from my mom because my mom would always take Rex to church. Sometimes people would look at him sideways because folk always are quick judges of what you're going through, but they lawyers for what they're going through. Rex contracted HIV, went into full-blown AIDS, and remember at the hospice, I was with you, we sang hymns over his bed. My mama, after sowing seeds over the years, asked Rex, do you want to give your life to Jesus? He said, yeah. And on the bed that he would not get up from, my cousin with his formerly pink sweater, doing what he wanted, sleeping with whoever he wanted, judged by many church folk, misunderstood by most, and at a certain time, even me. I saw him give his life to Jesus. I say that to say, this church will never be a place that will judge people based on where they are when they walk in. And don't you ever disrespect anybody that walks through these doors because you don't know their story, you don't know where they came from, and you don't know what they're going through. We have families in this church that represents every spectrum of humanity, and they are welcome here. We are the body of Christ. And today, the Lord asks you, who's your father? What's your function? And what's your flaw? And if you answer those questions, you'll look around and realize, I need family. I need an apostle. I need a prophet. Come here, Terry. I need men's ministry. Yeah. I need worship leaders. I need, I need all of it. And the people sitting next to you, you need them too. I need my fellas. I need a worship leader. I need a white one. I need a, I need a Brazilian one. Come on up, Major. <laughs> need a silk shirt. All right, there we go. I need somebody with a church suit on. There we go. <laughs> I need somebody with tiny pants with big calves. Yeah, right. right. Don't tell me. You got it. I need some biceps over there on the other side. <laughs> Get connected again. I'm about to pray for you. Lord Jesus, we are the church. We are a body of believers. We all come from somewhere. We all have a story, but we all have value. And we don't get to throw anybody away because we don't know their story or understand it. And God, no matter where you send us, we're going to love everybody you put in front of us. And we're going to defer with honor. And we will love first and reserve judgment to you. The doors of the church are open because that's where Jesus would be. Jesus would speak to anybody, sit at any table, but he would never compromise who he was. And so I pray today that you will bless this church, that Relentless Church will be a church of compassion, community, connectedness, and vision. But most of all, forgiveness. Mercy, grace, second chances. This is my prayer. We are the body shop. And where I'm flawed, may somebody cover me. And where they're flawed, may I cover them. Yeah. If you're in here and you've never given your life to Jesus, or you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, or you know that this is the body shop, a.k.a. church, local church that you need to be a part of, you know the Lord is talking to you, on the count of three, let the elbows of the people next to you go get all your stuff. And I mean, you got 35 American seconds to run to this altar. I don't want anybody leaving if you don't have to. But I ain't even counted the three. People already walking. One, two, 
three. If I'm talking to you, get to the altar. Come get saved, come rededicate, or come join. Who are we talking to? We need to celebrate as they come. 